I think the set's on fire. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Les Patterson. How are you, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, how are you, Bella? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> You're spilling all that stuff, don't you? It is in a new suit. It's a brand new. It's a brand new bag of fruit I've got on, Mike. And it's very good to see you. I've got a new tailor. A new tailor, have you? Yes. Yeah. Do you uh, go to the same tailor all the time? Well, I have a little bloke up there in Kowloon, <laughs> which is a suburb of Hong Kong, and I get about half a dozen at a time. And he sends me a Christmas card once a year. That's nice, isn't it? Very, very nice indeed. And gives you a drink while he's making the suit. Uh, I'm impressed by your figure. Well, of course, the first time I had this little bloke, a lovely little oriental fella, he was down on his knees with his mouth full of pins. <laughs> Looked like a shark. <laughs> and he ran the uh, tape up my inside leg. <laughs> Might like to do that later, Jackie. <laughs> Uh, he said, what side do you dress? Dress, I think. What side do you dress? I, I said, no worries, just make it a bit baggy round the knees. That's what I said. Are you with me? Are you, I must say this to you, Sir Les, although I don't much like drawing attention to it, but you seem a bit tired and emotional tonight. Well, I suffer from permanent jet lag, Mike. <laughs> In my job, you know, I'm whizzing all over the place. Bazza, you'd have the same thing. And uh, I'm constantly having to do a lot of entertaining. I'm always dipping into my slush fund. <laughs> and, uh, I have to entertain heads of state, you know, representing in so many fields, you know, the interests of my country, Australia, to which I drink this loyal toast. <laughs> I'm not tired, though. I'm very fresh, as a matter of fact. I've just been on stage in Baz's show. I'm not a welcome person there at all. He asked me to be in the show. And then he, you know, looks at me, you know, down his nose. What brings you back to Australia, Sir Les? My roots. <laughs> Your roots. I come back. Some people go overseas for their roots. <laughs> Bangkok, you know, up there in the Bali, all over the place. I come home for them. I do. I'm a very loyal Australian. And uh, I've got a family. A lovely family, and uh, they keep a pretty low profile. Lady Patterson. Lady Gwyneth, of course. Lady Gwen, yes, yes she is. Yes. Uh, How is she? Oh, she's a... <sighs> no, I haven't heard from her lately, but... <laughs> oh, she's a marvellous person. You know, she's tremendously loyal and... Uh, oh, a former model. What former model? I don't know. A model for the monster from the Black Lagoon, I guess. <laughs> She's not watching, I might say. She gets the news, I mean, she gets the newspapers, but they're always censored, like the newspapers in prisoner, you know? Yes. They're like a doily when she gets the news. <laughs> when you, uh, would you be going to, to England in an official capacity for the royal wedding? Well, I think it's almost definitely on the cards. Uh, I've asked for a pew near the door. In case I have to nip out on affairs of state, you understand, it's a long service. But, uh, I will be going to St Paul's Abbey for this marvellous moment. I'm a Republican too. This is a... I'm a paradox, viewers. I am a Republican uh, in many ways. You know, I hold the Republican sympathies of a, uh, a socialist elder statesman and my colleague there and uh, co-religionist, I might say, Bazza James. We don't see eye to eye on everything, but I have to be bipartisan. I've learned to be bipartisan as I've become a senior figure. And I'm going to be reading one of the lessons, I think, one of the Gospels. In the Abbey? In the Abbey, in St Paul's Abbey, and I... Uh, 
<laughs> I'm translating one of them into Australian. I'm going to call it <laughs> the Oz spell, according to Les. I haven't worked out which one, perhaps the Sermon on the Mount or one of those nice things. I'll just render it into colloquial Australian. Mm -hmm. I think it should go down sensationally well. Very impressive, yeah. Well, what about while you're over there? Do you think that uh, you might get the beckoning finger now that Charles has knocked down the Governor-General's job? I mean, you're an obvious candidate. Well, I was wondering when you were going to throw that at me, Mike. <laughs> It's still very stum, you know, to use the Red Sea pedestrian expression. <laughs> but it's stum. It's under wraps. This mustn't go any further. Right, viewers? No further. But I'm expecting any moment to be offered the GG job. Not that I have any... Oh, Charlie would be nice, but I don't know whether it's the popular choice. I think if there was a... <laughs> If there was a referendum, are you with me? Are you with me? If there was a referendum, I think the Australian public would go for the image that I project of the, you know, the senior Australian diplomat who's no been worries. around the trap. No worries. No, you bazza. <laughs> Look <Lucky> you bazza. <laughs> now what's, what's it... <laughs> What's it like being such a, a, a public figure? I mean, you obviously have to watch your behaviour in, in, in public. And, and well, I mean, you must... Now, what about the journalists, you see? How do you deal with them? So journos. Journos. Well, they're difficult, you know. Sometimes they get you in the gun. You know, you might have had that experience. You know, you're a big... You're a big name. You're very, very good at your job. You're an ace, Mike. And as soon as they know that, you know, they start trying to pull the rug out from under you. No worries, we've had it in our respective fields, this little actress here. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Sorry, um... <laughs> no, well, it's sometimes stiff competition, you know. The, the press. And I have followed the policy of slinging the journos. Slinging the journos? Sling them. <laughs> or sugar bag them. It's an old expression. If you wanted to <clears throat> keep someone sweet, you'd leave a sugar bag of beer out in the back veranda. They'd nip around and get it. They'd be OK for a week or two. It's a policy in Australia. You'll find it yourself. You'll be practising it pretty soon. <laughs> but, of course, slinging the journos is sometimes a bit difficult when you're in the upper echelons of the political spectrum. You with me? Um... And I have found, as a consultative person in the arts, in the capacity of directing where the art subsidies go, which has been a big job of mine, I call, call upon, they say, look, Les, they say to me, pull yourself together, will you? I'm not here to be sniggered at. They say to me, Les, look, are we going to give a couple of thousand bucks to this gorilla basket weaver? <laughs> or, you know, the street puppet theatre, or what are we going to give it to? I mainly say, the journos, you see, you give the arts grants to the journos. Goff started it and it worked very, very well for him, no worries. Because bet your life, where there's a journo, right? You with me? In his bottom drawer, he's got a poem, hasn't he? Or a play, or a scenario. <laughs> He's got one of these things at the bottom of the Sling him an arts grant, you see? He'll be sweet for good. He'll be sweet for good. He'll vote for you. He'll put it in the paper. It's the new way, you know? It's the new form of sugar bagging. No. Well, so that's... Uh, that's uh, <laughs> for the moment... Uh, no, we're not finished. We're going to come back after this break, but we have A to... Break take for refreshments. Break for refreshments. <laughs> I'll be in that, viewers. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. See you in a moment. Stay with us. Stay with us. Thank you.